From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hiya, boy. Vic Carson in Hartford. Say, things are really opening up out there on the coast, huh? So, you read the papers. Quite a surprise, learning that Mavis Gale was married to that penny arcade operator, Barney Slade. She'd been married to Tom Sanford. Sure, silent film actor. Only it turns out he and Slade are the same man. Really something, isn't it? Yeah, well... Here, Sanford's supposed to be dead for 27 years and all the time he's living down there in Ocean Park, and she didn't know about it. So she said. Only somebody saw her hanging around the arcade two nights before Slade's murder, Vic. What? What does she have to say about that? She wasn't around when the police went out to her place a little while ago. No one knows where she is. Look, have you been able to get an angle on those photographs of hers in Slade's apartment? Why the killer drew those question marks over them? No. And we haven't found out why the killer copped a half a dozen of the photos either. Photographs of who? How should I know? They're gone. Well, maybe they're important. No. Look, I'm on the trail of a character called the Preacher. If I find him, I may find some answers. Well, according to the papers, it... Johnny, are you sore about something? Yeah, Vic, I'm sore. Better read my report. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Ocean Park, California. To State Unity Life, Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Silent Queen matter. Expense account continued. (laughs) Item 9, 55 cents, one scotch and soda at a local pub. This was right after I talked with you, Vic. Yeah, I guess I was a little sore. Maybe it was because of that phone call earlier from Sergeant McKay when he told me that old-time screen star Mavis Gale had been seen hanging around the arcade where Slade was murdered. Okay, so Mavis Gale was in line to receive $25,000 as the beneficiary of Slade's insurance policy. I suppose he figured I was itching to get something on her so the insurance company wouldn't have to pay off. I downed the rest of my drink and walked over to the Penny Arcade in the Ocean Park Amusement Zone. back again? Yeah, I'm back again, Twyla. If you're looking for Sergeant McKay, he's... You're sure about what you told him that you saw Mavis Gale in here several nights ago? I'm sure. Recognize her picture in the morning paper. Well, you didn't volunteer this information to McKay until this afternoon. I sleep late. Okay. So Tuesday night, Mavis Gale showed up around eight, you said. Well, I couldn't swear to the time. It, it was around then. Well, exactly what did she do? I told the sergeant. Well, tell me. When I first noticed her, she was standing just inside the front door, like maybe she was waiting for somebody. Was Barney here in the arcade at the time? No, Barney was back there at that test your strength machine. It was busted. And uh, I was up and fixed it. Oh, hiya, Mr. Jessup. Evening, Mr. Dollar. Evening, Twyla. Hi. Yeah, Mr. Dollar, Frank here's pretty good with electrical stuff. So? So I helped Barney fix the machine. Look, Twyla, I mean, what happened then? What did Mavis do? Well, she waited around another ten minutes, maybe, and then beat it. Did Barney see her? Did he, Frank? You mean Mavis Gale was in here the night he was fixing the machine? So Twyla says. Do you think he noticed her, Mr. Jessup? Kind of hard for me to say, Mr. Dollar. We were both pretty busy fooling with that machine. I didn't notice her, that's for sure. Look, Mr. Dollar, don't you believe I saw this Gale Dane here? You need half a dozen witnesses. Okay, Twyla, don't get excited. Uh, Twyla, what I come in for, me and Gus are going to drive over to the mortuary, spend a little time with Barney. I know you were there. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure, I'd like to go again, Frank. I'll get one of the boys to take over the change booth for an hour or so. Thanks. And be around eight. Or I'll see you around. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Jessup. I'd like to ask the two of you something. Sure, go ahead. I've got a list of names here. Barney may have mentioned any one of them to you. Now, stop me if he did. Milo Martin, George Sheldon, Jarvis Pocket. Stop. Huh? Yeah, Sergeant McKay already asked us about that uh, fellow called the preacher, too. We've never heard of him. Okay, thanks. I wandered around the pier for a while, trying to figure out my next move. 
McKay wasn't around, and it was a cinch Mavis Gale hadn't returned to her Bel Air estate. So the only thing I could do was to keep on trying to track down the men who'd been on that hunting trip 27 years ago with Tom Sanford, alias Barney Slade. Milo Martin, number one on the list, hadn't been able to give out with anything exciting. But he had given me a five-year-old address on George Sheldon, number two on the list. Expense account item 10, $15.10. Cab Baron tips on the trail of George Shelton. It blew hot and cold until late that night when I wound up at a bar in downtown L.A. Yeah, old George worked here for a while. Handyman, sort of. That, that was I.W. Harper, you said? Right, it was sort of. So, you're an insurance investigator. Wouldn't be a cop, maybe, instead. No. Now about George. Just wondering is all, friend. What's he done you want him for? I'd just like to talk to him. You sure? I'm sure. It figures he wouldn't be getting into no trouble. Real sweet fella. Real sweet for a fellow who had it rough. And believe me, he had it rough. Used to be an actor. Yeah, I know. Had it real good during the silence, you understand? Then along comes the talkies and old George... Him having a voice three tones higher than an air raid siren is out. Oh, it happened to a lot of them. Only for old George, this, coming on top of a busted romance, this is too much. He starts hitting the bottle and Wait a gets minute. down. What romance? Oh, movie actress. She up and married another guy, so... Her name wouldn't be Mavis Kale, would it? <laughs> Say, funny you ask that. Oh? Her name's all over the front pages. You read the story? Yeah, yeah, I did. You mean that this... Nah, nah, this wasn't the romance. Old George had a yen for some doll named uh, Josephine Hinch or something like that. Say, uh, you wanting to talk with him, it got something to do with that Penny Arcade murder? Yeah, that's right. Now, where can I find George Sheldon? Well, the address is 1712 South Glendale Avenue, Glendale. Thanks. Another drink? No, I'll finish this one. I'll be on my way. You know, I kind of miss old George since he left us. Yeah, sure. Real sweet fella. Yeah, kind of miss old preacher, too. The way he used to rant and rave. What did you say? About the preacher? Yeah. Old guy. Was a friend of old George. Used to come in here and read him the riot act about his drinking. Wave his arms around and holler. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This preacher, what's his name? Hmm? Let me see now. Kind of screwy name. I ought to remember. Runs a rescue mission somewhere around here. What a friend help. Sure. Your name's Pocket. Jarvis Pocket? Right on the button. Thanks. Here's your five bucks. My pleasure. Oh, and friend, since you've been so generous, well, that address I gave you on old George... What about it? Well, save yourself the trip. It's a cemetery... Old George has been dead for a couple of years. Jarvis Pocket had been number three on my list of the men who'd gone on that hunting trip 27 years ago when someone had tried to murder Tom Sanford but got killed instead. Now that it turned out he was also the preacher I'd been looking for, well, that could turn into a big break. Expense account items 11 and 12, $6 even, tipped to above-mentioned bartender and cab fare around L.A. Skid Row looking for the rescue mission. It was a neat-looking affair. All the lights in the main hall were on, and as usual, the place was open for business. Seek and ye shall find. So, my brother, seek ye the way of the Lord, for along that way lies... There was a good crowd on hand. I eased into a seat alongside a bleary-eyed pilgrim who reeked of bad sherry. I looked around. The bottom of the barrel was here. Repent your sins and put down that bottle. The brothers were listening to the good man up front, but they weren't really tuned in. They were just waiting for a bowl of soup and a place to flop. Peace, my brothers. In him alone is your salvation and your hope of everlasting life. Open your hearts to eternal joy, and the glory shall be yours. We will now sing hymn number 32. When the singing was over, I got caught in the crush, and the next thing I knew, I was holding a bowl of lentil soup in my hand, and I realized I hadn't eaten all day. Meanwhile, I kept my eye on Brother Pocket and waited for a chance to get to him alone. That happened about five minutes later when he walked out. I followed him down a long, dark corridor and into his office. 
Please sit down, young man. Thanks. My name is Johnny Dollar, Brother Pocket. I'm an insurance investigator. Oh. Frankly, I thought you were a policeman when I saw you out there seated with my flock. Been expecting the law? Yes, you... <clears throat> Excuse me. I knew they'd be coming around sooner or later regarding that long friendship of mine with Barney Slade. Yeah, goes all the way back to the days he was known as Tom Sanford when you directed silent films. Check? Check. How long have you known Tom was alive, using the name of Slade? Oh, Mr. Dollar, I was witness to that horrible affair that took place during that hunting trip 27 years ago. Oh? Somehow, during the course of that day's hunt, I became separated from the others. Then suddenly I came upon Tom struggling with a man in a deep ravine. The would-be killer? The man with the shotgun? The other man fell, the gun went off, and he was killed instead of Tom. Go on, Brother Pocket. Well, immediately I told Tom we should find the others, tell them what had happened, that he would have none of it. Is that when he told you he preferred to let the world believe he was dead? And I suddenly realized it. Probably would be best for all concerned. In what way? Well, Mr. Dollar, Tom was constantly involved in trouble of some kind, drinking too much, gambling, women, brawling. He knew what it was all doing to Mavis, but he couldn't help himself. Believe me, Mr. Dollar, he loved her passionately. Made her life miserable, and his own as well. I see. Uh, Brother Pocket, about the would-be oh, killer. I, I know, I know what you're going to ask. The name of the man that tried to kill Tom. Yeah, you know him? Oh, yes. So did Tom. Only the two of us knew his identity. You're forgetting someone else. Hmm? The person who hired him. Hired? Well, Mr. Dollar, what makes you think he was hired? So maybe I'm wrong. Am I? I was never quite certain myself. Did Tom think he was? Oh, no, 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 definitely no. At least as far as Mavis Gale was concerned. Yeah, quite right. Did you share his opinion, Brother Pocket? Yeah, as I said before, I, I could never quite make up my mind. Oh, why not? Did you think Mavis Gale incapable of doing such a thing? Hiring someone to kill off Tom? No, I, I, I'd rather not say. Okay, okay. So who was the man who tried to murder Tom? What was his name? I'm afraid it'll mean little to you, Mr. Dollar. His name was Joe Fallon. Well, you're right. It means nothing. Well, this fact, however, might prove interesting to you. Joe Fallon, at one time, had been Mavis Gale's personal chauffeur. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, audience with a queen and a brush with a killer. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Adrian Jean Doe. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. (laughs) 